Okay, today we're gonna to run some benchmarks on the new 9100 Pro 4 terabyte. Uh, why the 4 terabyte? Uh, because it gives you an extra 800 megabits, or it's almost a gig actually. Between one gig and 800 uh, megabytes per second uh, additional speed. Also, I recommend uh, the four terabyte because if you want to get the most performance out of your drive, you have to use Samsung's uh, Samsung Magician. And um, that has an option to do what they call over provisioning. And over provisioning uses about 10% of your hard drive capacity. Uh, to give you the absolute highest level of read and write performance with consistency over time so you don't get degradation. Uh, so definitely if you're gonna invest in one of these, get the four terabyte model. And uh, we're on an Asus uh, X670E uh, Extreme uh, Crosshair uh, motherboard, AMD AM5. And that comes with this uh, really nice, what they call a Rogue Gen Z.2 adapter. Uh, it looks to me like, we're gonna get into this, right? But it looks to me actually like you can put two M.2 drives in here. So you can put uh, one on the um, top and one on the bottom. Uh, I'm only gonna install one drive in here because I don't wanna do lane splitting, right? Uh, this is four lanes of PCI Express 5.0. We want to use all four lanes. We don't want to have lane sharing. We're going to use this guy right here, and I'm going to show you how we get that set up. And then uh, we're going to run some benchmarks, right? But before we run those benchmarks, I want to tell you, you know, something that's really important here, right? So uh, we have a heat sink right here at the base of the motherboard. And you can see at the base of the motherboard, I have a 990 Pro, that's a two terabyte, and I have the 9100 installed. And we're gonna be moving that 9100. And we're gonna be taking that 990 that's on the right-hand side, and we're gonna be putting it in the slot where the 9100 is currently sitting. And the reason why is because if you install anything into that lower PCI Express slot, so you have that PCI Express 16 lane slot, then down below you got a four lane slot, uh, actually might be an eight lane slot down there. And then you have that secondary M.2 slot on the right hand side. If you put anything into either of those three slots, your video card is only gonna run on eight lanes, okay? And if you're running a 4090 or a five series card, or even a three series card, you wanna be running all 16 lanes. You don't wanna be running eight lanes, that's gonna affect your performance. So in which case, you don't want anything installed in those lower three slots. This is really important. It's not just this motherboard. It's like all the motherboards, you really have to check the situation, right? Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna take uh, that uh, Gen Z.2 and we're gonna install it up here. And you can kind of see, I'll try to get in there, but there's the slot. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of on the right-hand side of the memory. You can see it up there. I'll try to point to it. Uh, it is right up there. Okay, and that's where we're gonna put that uh, 9100 Pro, and then we're gonna run some benchmarks, so stay tuned. Okay, so, you know, the Gen Z.2 card, it's double-sided. This particular side is for the Gen 5 PCI Express 5.0 M.2. This side of the card is referred to as M.2 underscore one or M.2 one, okay? And here, you know, we have our 9100 Pro, which we're gonna mount. Uh, so we need a mounting screw right here. That's a, that's form factor 2280. So we need a uh, screw right here. And you can see right here, it says M.2 pad, okay? This is a rubber pad. Uh, there's a little bag that comes in your motherboard box. Don't miss it. Here's the part number in case you lost it. One th that's the part number, you can just pause the video. It's got two pads in it, okay? One for this side. One for the other side. The other side supports a PCI Express 4 drive, so 4.0, Gen 4. Uh, but my recommendation is if you're gonna use this, you should really only be running with one drive so you're not doing lane sharing or lane splitting. Uh, you have three bags, all the same part number here, that come with these little uh, screws. You have an extra one, but uh, the little little uh, nut, uh, the nut and the little screw that's what you're gonna put into this hole. And if you were gonna do the flip side, you would use one of these on the flip side, obviously. Uh, you also have an extra thermal pad right here. Uh, that's an extra one. 
but you have a thermal pad here. Don't forget to remove uh, the tape, okay? So you're gonna take this tape off right here. You're gonna put the M.2 in here with your little pad underneath and uh, we're gonna get it cinched up here. We're gonna get it installed and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just wanna make a few comments here. So this is a five millimeter uh, nut here. You can use a five millimeter nut driver. Do not over torque it, but put it in with enough. You know, tighten it enough by hand, but don't over torque it. Okay, here's our pad. It's a, it's a sticky pad on both sides. We're gonna peel this top piece off in a little bit, but it helps to keep the drive there. It also helps to keep it level because this thermal pad's gonna push on it a little bit. So it, it keeps pressure against this thermal pad, okay? Appropriate pressure. It keeps the, the drive from bowing or bending in the middle. That's the purpose of this pad. It's not for it's not really for thermal purposes, okay? Um what's the other thing that I want to mention here? Ah, right. The uh, 9100 Pro, right? So you see the sticker on there? Okay, that is a thermal sticker. You do not need to remove that. Do not remove that, okay? Same thing on the backside. Do not remove that. It's specifically designed so that you can put your thermal pad and your heat sink right over that so you don't have to bother messing with that sticker, okay? Okay, we've removed the film, okay, from our thermal pad here. Double check to make sure this is the Gen 5 slot if you're installing a Gen 5 M.2. And the Gen 5 again is the M.2 underscore 1 slot. We have the screw tightened up, you know, firm but not, not too tight. We don't want to over torque it. Uh, but you also don't want vibration from your fans or whatever backing out the screw, right? So that's what it looks like when it's installed there. Um, you can see that my drive looks a little bit liquidy. That is because I had it installed uh, at the bottom of my motherboard with these thermal pads, right? So that's kind of what that is. It's just thermal it's thermal grease essentially All right, so I'm gonna mount this tighten it up. We're gonna install it and we're gonna get going Okay, when you tighten these two screws back up, you're gonna bottom those you're gonna bottom out those screws Okay, bottom them out. They're hard. They hard stop and then check your work. Okay, look in there Right. See where your little thermal pad is between the M.2. Make sure there's no bowing or bending or funny business going on. Um, it should look pretty good. And, you know, you, sh you can kind of see in the middle. Maybe not really, but I mean, I'm shining a light on it, but you can't really see. Um, the little black pad is keeping the drive pressed against the thermal pad. So that's the purpose of that. If you don't put that in there, you're not going to get good pressure on that thermal pad and all of this heat sink and all of its cooling capability will be for nothing if you don't have consistent solid contact across the run. So keep that in mind. This is basically ready to install. Okay, so we have the uh, Gen Z.2 the Asus ROG Gen, Gen Z.2 installed in the slot right next to the memory. That's what it looks like. Okay, fully installed, massive heat sink. Um, so that's the 91 Samsung 9100 Pro right up there. And then down here underneath that heat sink above that PCI Express slot where it says M.2, that's where I have the Samsung 990 Pro. So we're going to power it on. We're going to go into the BIOS and we're going to do some configurations. All right, we're gonna focus on the uh, BIOS configuration here. So we're gonna go into the advanced menu. We're gonna go to uh, on, onboard, now let's see, is it, uh, yeah, it's onboard device configure. Uh, yeah, onboard device configuration. And then here you've got uh, your PCI Express 16 lane slot one and slot two, okay? So, oops, so for slot one, you want to put it in auto mode, okay? And then for slot two, put it into by eight mode. If you enable, sorry, if you go to slot one and you enable uh, M.2 there, any of those other options other than auto, okay? If you do that, slot one will only run on eight lanes of PCI Express, okay? So all your video cards are probably 16 lane cards and then you're getting half your bandwidth capacity on your video card. So definitely don't want to do that. Uh, now we're going to scroll, um, now this PCIe Gen 5 Redriver optimization, that's if you're using the PCI Express um, RAID card for M.2 drives, but we're not doing that. 
You're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here and you're gonna to go to PCIe link speed at the very bottom of onboard device configuration. And here's where you can set the gen, okay? So the PCI Express generation uh, for each kind of slot. So for the first one, we're doing gen four. I got a 4090, that's PCI Express 4.0. M.2 link mode, we're gonna put it on auto. That's for the secondary M.2 slot. Uh, this is gonna be on auto. That's for the secondary PCI Express slot, which I don't have anything in installed into right now. That's empty. Um, and then my M.2 one, I have the Samsung 990 Pro installed in that, and that's a PCI Express 4.0, so we're gonna run that at Gen 4. Everything else we're gonna run auto. Um, if we go back up and we go to, let's go back up. Um, go back here, let's go to NVMe configuration. We should see both of our drives here, one and two, right? Now we're gonna go to the boot menu. Now when you're working with M.2 drives, you wanna use UEFI version of Windows. I have a whole nother video on this, but you wanna disable the compatibility support module, okay? You wanna go into secure boot and you wanna set it to Windows UEFI mode. That's important. And then uh, in terms of my boot options here, uh, I wanna boot from my 9100 Pro, which I have right there. So I'm gonna boot from that. And then, um, yeah, that's looking pretty good here. Um, we can go in and to save and exit basically. Yeah, it's good. Save and reset, yes. Okay, so we have the Samsung 9100 Pro 4 terabyte and the Samsung 990 Pro 2 terabyte drive. This is the Samsung Magician uh, software for managing your Samsung hard drives. And uh, the very first thing you're going to want to do is go into performance optimization and set it to full performance mode. This will in effect, enable over provisioning, which basically by default reserves 10% of your hard drive space. Uh, it does require a system restart. So after you've done this, now you can start benchmarking your hard drive. Start with the default settings in Samsung Magician. And uh, one thing I can tell you is that I was able to achieve these particular speeds using the default settings. You know, the Samsung claims that uh, you can get up to 14,800 megabytes per second on the uh, sequential read. I was able to get 14,005, so pretty close. Um, and then in terms of sequential write, they said 13,400 megabytes. I was able to get 13,115, so pretty close, right? Um, this is the hard drive that I'm running my operating system on. So you have to factor that, take that into consideration, right? When they benchmark that hard drive, I almost guarantee you they're doing it on a Linux operating system. And it's not the primary hard drive. It's a, probably a secondary drive that's not in use. They have no background applications running whatsoever and they run the benchmark. Uh, so those are the absolute best numbers that you can possibly get. So I'm very, very happy personally with these numbers, uh, considering that I'm running Windows 11 directly on the hard drive, right? And benchmarking it with all these background processes and applications running. So uh, pretty stellar results. Uh, this is the ATTO disk benchmark application, which is you know pretty standard out there on the internet. On the left-hand side, I am showing the read and write speeds, sequential read and write uh, for the 9100 Pro on the left, and on the right, the 990 Pro 2 terabyte, and the 9100 Pro is effectively two times faster than the 990, okay? So it's like 1.9 and change, it's basically two times faster. So really outstanding uh, benchmarks that we see here. If we were able to achieve or configure an IO size above 64 megs. That is the limit for this particular application. Uh, but if we were, I would assume that the read and the write would actually go above because it's just, it's ticking up and up and up and up. And if we were able to go up to say 128 megabytes, then uh, I think we would see higher numbers here. Uh, here we have the um, IOPS 
or IOs per second, IO per second, operations per second here. Uh, and these numbers are absolutely phenomenal. Okay, these are in the thousands. Okay, so all these numbers are Ks. Absolutely phenomenal IO. The IO uh, on the 9100 Pro versus the 990. See, uh, this is the C drive, so I'm running the operating system on it, right? Um, so you can see what the I.O. here looks like. Now, the D drive, right, that's the 990 Pro. Nothing's running on that. It's just an empty drive. It's got nothing on it. You can see that we're getting, you know, in some cases, uh, slightly higher numbers. So that has a lot to do, right? It, it, it's like, you know, it's it's not like you're going to take this and you're going to get the exact benchmark numbers that Samsung's putting out there unless you recreate their benchmark scenario. But those are the theoretical maximum speeds that that drive is capable of, but we're getting very close. You know, I'm very happy with the drive. It, the performance is absolutely outstanding. If you're interested in the drive, I, uh, I put a link in the description to buy one on Amazon. So check that out and uh, have fun gaming or producing or whatever you're doing. And I'll catch you later.